the second lecture on fourier series today we shall discuss the dirichlet condition first then go to the statement of <coughs> fourier theorem dirichlet consider a function f of x which is defined in the closed interval av that is x with delta being v minus a the fourier the dirichlet condition says that the function f of x is single valued that means mm, the multiple valued functions are not included in it if you have a multiple valued function then we are to divide it into two separate functions second part f of x is continuous in ab so uh, if f of x be continuous in ab then we can write it like this this is this type of function if the function is not continuous it may have finite number of finite discontinuities uh, consider a function like this so the left hand limit is this much and right hand limit is this much and the function is discontinuous and the amount of discontinuity is this so this function has a finite discontinuity uh, if we consider a staircase and consider the potential along the staircase so the um, the potential is v zero over here he, if this height be a, h then it is gh this is twice gh and so on so forth so the the amount of discontinuity is gh so these such discontinuities are called finite discontinuities on the other hand um, if we uh, uh, consider tan function around around x is equal to pi by 2 the right hand limit it tends to infinity and in the left uh, sorry left hand limit it uh, tan function tends to infinity uh, plus infinity and on the right hand side it tends to minus infinity so the discontinuity is an infinite amount so the, by finite discontinuity we mean the amount of discontinuity is finite so the uh, and then comes to the number of discontinuities number of discontinuities means if we consider a function uh, function like this sine of one upon x with x tends to zero sine of one upon x with limit x tends to zero so it will have um, many minimas and minor, the function will be this we define a function f of x f of x is equal to plus one if sine of one upon x is positive and this is minus one if so, this is negative we define a function like this so such function will have infinite number of these continuities this this f function will be like this the, so the function will have infinite number of discontinuities the amount of discontinuity is finite it, the, the amount of discontinuity is two but the number of uh, discontinuities is infinite so i have explained what do we mean by finite discontinuity by finite discontinuity we mean the, the left hand limit and uh, the difference between left hand limit and right hand limit of the function at the point of discontinuity is a finite quantity when the difference is infinite it, we call it infinite discontinuity then coming to the counting of discontinuities such discontinuities can, uh, are infinite number of discontinuities <coughs> uh, another thing if we consider uh, the functional limit x tends to 0 tan of tan of 1 upon x this function will have infinite number of infinite discontinuities so um, Fourier theory Grislet condition says that the, the, the amount of the if you want to expand a function in series Fourier series the number of discontinuities must be finite 
at the same time the amount of this continuity must be finite here we have st stated uh, an example where the amount of this continuity uh, is finite but the number of this continuity is infinite if we consider the tan function around uh, pi by 2 the there is a single discontinuity but the amount of discontinuity is infinite and here we have stated an example which has infinite number of infinite discontinuities so that's complete the discussion on point 2 now come to the point function th <coughs> third point th maxima and minima if we consider tan function around pi by 2 it's not uh, it doesn't have any ma maxima or minima it has a discontinuity so whenever we have a maxima or minima the amount of the the value of the function must be finite so uh, by maxima and minima we mean that and the what is the uh, finite number of finite number of maxima and minima we consider a function f of x with limit x tends to 0 sine of 1 by x the function oscillates between plus minus 1 so the maxima is plus 1 minima is minus 1 and the number of uh, maxima minima is infinite so this is the discussion on third point so this does not this function does not obey the uh, fi finite does not have finite number of maxima and minima third fourth point is that the <coughs> integral of the function integration of the absolute value of the function in the interval must exist and finite for the expansion of a function in Fourier series, a periodicity is not at all a necessary condition. But um, in almost all of the all the books, this exp this point is written. And if you do not write this point in examination, marks may be deducted. That's why I have included this point. Strictly speaking, this is not included in Dirichlet's condition. The point is that if we have a periodic function, then we expand the function in the interval of a, b, then it can also be applied to uh, a plus b to, to b, or like this. So that is to say we, we expand the function in an interval and we can mm, go on repeating it. Uh, or from one interval to another interval but if the function is not periodic the expansion made in AB is valid only in this region not outside so that's all, that's all about Dirichlet's condition it is a, uh, you see that uh, whenever we expand a function in Taylor series uh, it, the requirement the requisite condition was the analyticity of the function that is the function must be finite and all of its derivative must be finite in the range in the Fourier expansion the, the sufficient condition is the Dirichlet's condition which imposes a lots of relaxation the function may not be continuous the function may have discontinuities but in the case of uh, Taylor series expansion the, uh, it cannot be expanded at a point of discontinuity because the derivative do not exist over there so in that case Dirichlet condition is a much more liberal condition over that imposed by the analyticity condition in Taylor series now in the last class we have discussed the completeness and orthogonality of the sine function and cosine function and we said that if we have an even have an even function in the interval 0 to 2 pi then it can be expanded if we have if f of x is even and is def defined in the interval 0 to 2 pi then one can write f of x is equal to sum over n cos of n x if f x is odd then we can expand it as
this is the completeness of the uh, sine and cosine function and since the, the nx and s cos nx cos mx forms an orthogonal basis it is very easy to find out the expansion coefficients in general if i have a function fx which is neither even nor odd then we can write f of x is equal to f of x plus f of minus x by 2 plus f of x minus f of minus x by 2 so we write it as g of x plus h of x where g of x is equal to half f of x plus f of minus x obviously g of minus x is equal to g of x this is the even part and h of x is f of x minus f of minus x this leads to h of minus x is equal to minus h of x this is odd so any function any function which is neither even nor odd can be written as a combination of even function and odd function so we can expand any function f of x is equal to in this for even function we write this and for odd part this this can also be written as a0 because cos of 0 is 0 plus summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n x plus b n sin n x this is basically Fourier ex trigonometric Fourier expansion only thing is that this is being written as a 0 by 2 due to convention and which will come uh, where and whose justification will come soon so we, we write that if f of x in general now this entire discussion has is with regard to the interval 0 to 2 pi now if we have a general interval a to b the statement becomes like this if f of x satisfies Rich let's condition in Abbey then trigonometric Fourier series is f of x is equal to a 0 by 2 plus summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity with delta is equal to the amount of the interval if we put delta is equal to 2 pi this immediately reduces to this one here we have stated the Fourier series in its most of the general form and you whatever be the interval the argument will be adjusted accordingly uh, before going to uh, evaluation of <coughs> evaluation of constant let me so say how the argument behaves so a the lower limit a upper limit b and the con del it is the value of delta is equal to b minus a and then the argument 2n 2n pi x by delta the argument it is 0 
pi sorry 2 pi so it is 2 pi and the argument is 2 pi delta is equal to 2 pi so which cancels it is simply an x if the interval be minus pi to plus pi then again it is 2 pi again it is an x if the interval be 0 to 2l then 2 2 cancels out the interval may be minus l to plus l again the in In uh, time series expansion, it appears that 0 to t time period t, then it is t, and you have instead of x, I am writing the argument as t. So the it is 2n pi t by capital T. We know that omega t is equal to 2 pi. So 2 pi by t is omega. So this is equal to 2 pi by t is capital T is omega so it is n omega t the harmonic analysis so if n is equal to 1 you have fundamental and for n higher greater than 1 we will have the harmonics you may have an interval say uh, 2 to 5 then the interval is 3 I am then you write 2n pi x upon 3 this would be the argument uh, so whatever be the argument uh, interval the argument will be adjusted accordingly you need not to bother about the argument if you define the function uh, Fourier series in this fashion this definition is not sufficient it is uh, this is no oh, oh this is called the trigonometric Fourier series uh, we will encounter other type of Fourier series metric Fourier expansion Uh, uh, in future classes we shall ex encounter complex Fourier series also to distinguish it from uh, distinguish this from the complex Fourier series we call it trigonometric Fourier series the statement of the Fourier series will be completed when we will say specify the values of a a n's and b n's now to find out the value of a n uh, a 0 first a 0 we uh, multiply uh, we, ma we integrate this for both the sides between limits a to b so we have on the left a to b f of x dx this term we will have a 0 by 2 dx a to b plus summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos of 2 n pi x delta dx from a to b and then plus b n a to b sine of 2 n pi x delta dx you know that this part is i n c and this integral is i n s this is equal to 0 this is also equal to 0 but as the result is delta times delta n 0 and sum starts with n is equal to 1 so this is 0 so these two term goes and we will left with this much a 0 by 2 times this value is delta or we will have a 0 is equal to 2 upon delta a to b fx dx 
so a0 by 2 the first term a0 by 2 is basically the average value a0 by 2 is equal to 1 upon delta f of x dx from a to b this is the average value of f of x in a b if we have an even function then it will survive for an odd function the average value will go so first thing is that uh, we we have evaluated a n uh, sorry a 0 a 0 is 2 by delta f of x d of x a to b now we want to find a n with n greater non zero with non zero n so to this end we multiply both the sides by this we write f of x cos of 2 m pi x upon delta integrate over dx from a to b now the first term we are multiplying both the sides by this term so first term is a 0 by 2 a to b and obviously m is not equal to 0 cos of plus summation over m is equal to 1 to infinity here we have first term is a n then integration cos of 2 n pi x upon delta this is this term and we have multiplied it with another term cos of 2 m pi x upon delta dx from a to b plus the sign term you see this this part this integral is i n c which is which is delta times delta n 0 this integration part is i n m c c which is equal to delta by 2 delta n m and this integral part is i and m sc which is 0 since m is not equal to 0 this term is 0 so all the term survives is this so the result is summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity and for this we write delta by 2 a n delta m n when the sum is carried out this becomes delta by 2 a m so the expression for a m is 2 by delta times thus so we write a m is equal to 2 by delta a to b f of x cos of 2 m pi x delta dx if you want to find the other coefficient we do only this replacement we multiply this instead of cos by sine then this is sine this part is sine 
and this part is sine. This is the change. We multiply both the sides by sine two m pi, and the, and you see that this part, this will be. This part will be i n s, which is equal to zero of s. This part will be. This part will be i n m c s is equal to zero, and this part will be i n m s s is equal to delta by two delta m n. So in that case, this part is zero. This part is zero. Only this term contributes. So we will have n is equal to one to infinity b n from this part, and this is delta by two delta of m n. So when n sum is carried out, this is delta by two b n, or we will have B m is equal to So this is the statement of Fourier series. So a function satisfying richless condition in A B can be expanded in trigonometric Fourier series like this, where the expansion coefficients are given by this formula. These are known as Euler's formula. So the three expansion coefficient a zero, a m, the coefficient corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the even part is this, and this is for the odd part. The orthogonality condition has helped us uh, uh, to determine a m unambiguously. Another thing, the, the use of a zero by two instead of a zero is uh, seems to apparent from this factor. The, the factor is two by delta in every case. This is due to this. If we do write it in the form a, then two would be missing, and this has been put in a systematic order. Now, <coughs> uh, the next point that has to be addressed is that if we expand this um, function in a b, and uh, this expansion is valid for a, all values of x in between a, a and b, if we choose a particular value if x is equal to c where c belongs to a b then c may be a point of continuity say so, so the function say the function uh, this is the function a and b point a and b and the function point c is somewhere there So C is a point of this point of continuity. If C is a continuous point, then if we put x is equal to C, the function, the, the value as estimated on the right hand side will approach to this value with increasing number of terms. What do we mean by increasing number of terms? This expansion actually runs from n is equal to one to infinity. But in general, in reality, you cannot add up all these terms. So what one does? One does an approximation: s n is equal to a zero by two plus summation over n is equal to one to capital n. As if we are uh, we are considering the partial sum, the nth partial sum, where we consider the uh, range of small n values from one to n. As we go on increasing the value of capital n, uh, the function will approach to the value of f of c 
if the point x is equal to c is a continuous point so if if f of x is at x is equal to c then limit n tends to infinity sn ten, sn of x tends to f of x so if by increasing the number of terms uh, we can estimate the function as accurately as we wish but uh, the point C may also be a point of discontinuity uh, so we may have the function like this this is the value of C the C is a point of discontinuity where the left hand side left hand limit we call it as phi L and the right hand limit is phi u that is we define limit x tends to c minus f of x is equal to and limit x tends to c plus f of x is upper limit the uh, argument is not required uh, upper limit u then what happens if we expand this right hand expand the function by this fashion and we go on increasing the number of terms then it uh, the Fourier series approaches a value this so the for if x is equal to c is a point of finite discontinuity then sn of x with limit limit n tends to infinity sn of x approaches at the point of discontinuity the Fourier series estimates the series as its average value at the point of discontinuity so if we have a function say like this this is 0 and this is one and if we expand the Fourier series properly and evaluate the value over here it is a continuous point we will get zero value if we estimate over here I will get one value if we estimate at the point of discontinuity we will get the value 0.5 which is the sum of this and furthermore and a phenomena will appear at the point of discontinuity called the Gibbs phenomena which we will discuss uh, later so this is a uh, um, case <coughs> so this completes the definite the statement of Fourier series the state um, the statement comprises of three parts one is the statement itself then specification of the constants and what should be the value as estimated by the Fourier expansion at a, at a point within a V uh, so if we that is to say if fx is continuous the uh, estimated value approaches the functional value and if the function is discontinuous then the estimated value or expansion value approaches the average value uh, at the point of discontinuity this completes the statement of Fourier series now um,